Dollar Hank, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at what I hope is pronounced Crayol Design Org, which is being made by form user Dylan Simrau. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is quite a nice variety of parts that are all based off of designs by the Indian Space Research Organization. And that's pretty cool. We don't see a whole lot of ISRO stuff here in the game, so I'm happy to have it here. So let's uh, jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what we do get. Now let's grab ourselves a Mark 1-3 three command pod for some size comparison sake here and then turn on our mod filter just leaving on the Crayol design or that's probably not how you say it at all but that's what we're going with now sadly we have no command pods to speak of for now the mod maker is wanting to add in more designs in the future but for now we do start in fuel tanks with our first part the Druve 3500 fuel tank which is a pretty nice thing with a lot of good detail holding liquid fuel in a quantity of 765 and oxidizer of 935 and if we pop it on here you can see the size of it is a little bit smaller than the 2.5 meter size roughly probably around two meters actually and has just a load of great detail I love all those little bits going up there and even more impressively all the stuff hidden in here which you'll probably never see it just it's it's a lot of nice fun little detail there that I very much do appreciate now the next couple of tanks are all pretty much more or less the same here so I'm not really gonna be popping all of them on for size comparison and such as you can see they're all roughly the same size and uh, quite a small little tank but let's start with the first of them the S460F fuel tank, which holds 27 liquid fuel, as well as 33 oxidizer. Now we then have a another fuel tank with the exact same name of S460F, holding, again, the same number of 27 liquid fuel and 33 oxidizer, but it's ever so slightly longer, just with a little bit of extra stuff at the bottom. We then have the S490F fuel tank uh, holding 45 liquid fuel and a 55 oxidizer. And then finally, my favorite of the four, the S490F K solar fuel tank, which once again holds 45 liquid fuel and 55 oxidizer, but does also have a built-in solar panel producing electric charge at a rate of 0.3 per second. Very nice for a compact probe mission there. I do like that uh, design. Very cool. Now then after that we run into the engines category where the first one we have is the 220G solid rocket booster producing 143 kilonewtons max of a thrust using solid fuel and has on board 226 of it now then after that we have the 220 XL which is ever so slightly larger producing 158 kilonewtons of thrust and holding on board 304 solid fuel and if we do take a look at both of these here uh, for their scale you can see they are uh, just slightly larger versions uh, from the one to the other very good but then whoa oh boy do we get supersized with the next one the 3200 solid rocket booster which actually has multiple engines first and foremost we have the solid rocket portion which will produce 957 max kilonewtons of thrust using solid fuel and it has on board 3501 of that fuel but it does also have two small liquid fuel and oxidizer engines producing six kilonewtons of thrust it's not much but they have gimbling so it really does help you control the ascent of your rocket and it does also have on board 25.2 liquid fuel and 30.8 oxidizer and oh my is this thing oh big I love it. Just look at this thing. There's the two little side uh, liquid fuel oxidizer engines. It's just a cool, awesome little engine. I do very much appreciate it. Again, just the great detail on this thing at the bottom here. And I just love how tiny the little nozzles are for the uh, liquid fuel engines there. Uh, very cool indeed. Now, after that, we have 
the Bruno 100 solid motor, which does produce 49.5 kilonewtons of max thrust using solid fuel and holds on board 260 of it. And as you can see right here, again, that's slightly less than the 2.5 meter size there, and just another fun little design. A very good indeed. Now then, after that, we have the first stage retro motor, which produces 20 kilonewtons of thrust using solid fuel and has on board five of it. Now I'll hold off on showing you that one till later, as next we have the Pike 2 engine, producing 362.5 kilonewtons of max thrust using liquid fuel and oxidizer. Doesn't have any on board, but it does have four degrees of vectoring range on the gimbal. Very good. And as you can see, a very nice uh, thin motor could fit easily onto uh, all the way down to 1.25 size rocket quite nicely, but quite elongated. But all in all, very very cool, and again, just some lovely detail on this thing. But, oh my, not nearly as much detail as the next engine, which is the S4 propulsion module. Now, this thing's got quite a bit. Now, engine-wise, it does produce 7.5 kilonewtons of thrust using liquid fuel and oxidizer. And as for the fuel, it has 13.5 liquid fuel as well as 16.5 oxidizer. But beyond that, this also holds a hundred electric charge, does have 15 monopropellant, a reaction wheel, SAS, it does actually count as an unmanned command pod, so I know what I said earlier about it not having a command pod, technically not in that category, but this one counts as one. And yeah, it's a pretty cool little service module here. That's uh, pretty impressive. If we pop that on here, you can also see that it again has loads of detail. You got the two little engines there, but what's more fun is you do still have an attachment point there for putting in a bigger engine or whatever else you do so desire. But a lot of the great detail on this thing is on the top. Just look at all that. Just all sorts of cool little bits and bobs on this thing. Overall, it's a very cool engine. Now, after that one, we have two more retro rockets. The first being the second stage retro motor, producing 12 kilonewtons of thrust and has on board 2.5 solid fuel as it is a solid rocket motor. And then we have the second stage Oolage motor, which will produce 20 kilonewtons of thrust with solid fuel and holds five solid fuel on board. And let's pop these on. So we've got on here first, that is the uh, first stage retro rocket. We then have the second stage rec retro rocket there and then the Oolage motor or Oolage. I'm never sure how to pronounce that word, but there we go. Just uh, several different fun little designs a very nice indeed now let's check all those babies off and then head to the next category which is command and control where we only have one part and that is the second stage roll thruster which is an RCS block which uses monopropellant to have one thruster power and does also hold on board 10 monopropellant. And if we just check this thing on here, it's a pretty basic little one there, and not with a whole lot of points, so it's really only going to give you the sort of two thruster points on either side. Again, it is a roll thruster. It's not to meant, it meant to be a full RCS block here, but will serve its purpose. Now then, after that, we head down to structural, where we've got a couple of parts here, and I'm just going to kind of roll through them all real quick, and then we'll take a few uh, closer looks at some of these. Now, the first one is the long payload adapter, just a nice adapter between two sizes. We then have the Pike 2 mount, which is just a big structural mount part, which is, you know, a thing. Uh, we then, after that, do have the S4 dual launch adapter base, again, going from a small to a large size this time, or, you know, you can flip it around use it the either way. Then after that, we have the S4 dual launch adapter cap, which isn't just an adapter, but also a decoupler with 100 ejection force. Then, after that one, we have the S4 secondary payload rack, just a, well, yeah, payload rack, there you are. Then, after that, we have the S4 structural extension for extending the structures of your ship there. Very nice. And then, finally, we have the short payload adapter, uh, very similar to the long payload adapter, just being, you know, 
more short. Now, uh, we'll check on a couple of these just for the size comparison. There's the long adapter, there's the Pike 2 mount, the payload adapter, and a fun one here is the dual launch adapter cap, as this one actually has two different switchable subtypes where you can either have the 1.875 meter top or a 0.9375 meter top if you want to go for an even smaller part there. So very nice that we do have the ability to change that up. Now let's chuck all these off here. We have got nothing in robotics, but in coupling we've got two parts. The first being the 0.625 meter payload decoupler, which is very tiny little decoupler with an ejection force of 100. And then after that we have the interstage it's just named that, but it's an interstage decoupler with a hundred ejection force. And if we pop this thing on here, it does actually have, again, two subtypes, uh, which are just stylistic. We have that one, which seems to have some more larger bits down there and uh, some interesting more details there. And then the other interstage bit, which just seems to have a couple little bits and bobs around the place. So yeah, it seems to be all uh, just aesthetic. Even on the interior, this one uh, the has more ribs uh, and support. Actually, it just seems to rotate the supports there now that I'm looking at it a bit more closely. But yes, just two different aesthetic looks for you to go with. Now, after that, in payload, we have a one thing, and that is the S4 fairing base, which is a lovely fairing base with a custom-built fairing with a max radius of 1.75 meters. It is a decoupler with a hundred ejection force and does have some built-in RCS thrusters with one thruster power. And if we pop that baby on there, you can see the RCS blocks right there on that side and on the other side. It doesn't have them in between, but uh, yeah, we do have some fun little bits here. And of course, we can build ourselves a nice little fairing for putting any of your probes or uh, whatever into. And then after that, I believe that is the final part. We've got nothing in aerodynamic, nothing in ground, thermal, electrical, communication, science, nor cargo, nor utility. So yeah, that is it. Now, one thing I didn't really mention on all the names here is all of these are a part of the Druve rocket. And it's literally just each part starts with Druve 3500, as Druve S4. So it just would have been a lot of repetition, but did want to mention that now, as all of these are part of, uh, I assume that rocket design. I gotta admit, I don't know a whole lot about the uh, Indian space program. And I'll have to look this up later. It looks, uh, looks interesting. A lot of fun parts. Well, let's take a look at a monstrosity of a rocket that I did build with this earlier, because, well, Oh boy, I like this thing. It's super powerful, especially with two of these uh, 3200 solid rocket engines. Now, in all the images I saw on the mod page, it's they had this as the main sail, basically, in the center. But I figured, what the heck, let's go for just a ton of power and put them on the sides. And oh boy, yeah, this can get into orbit just with the two of those. <laughs> it's wonderful. So let's go launch it real quick, take a look at what this thing can produce. As of course, like with the best rocket part packs out there, you don't have to build the rocket how it's intended to be built. You can, um, you know, mix and match them to make whatever it is you so desire. So there we are, a lovely look at the rocket there, and a nice picture for the thumbnail, beautiful. And then let's get ready to launch in a three, two, one. And away we go. Really should have had some more supports down there, but uh, you know what? It works, it works. Now I only have half the fuel in these things right now because yeah, they seriously could get us all the way into orbit with them being full up on either side because well, that's a whole lot of solid fuel. And we do also have these small little engines going there, which once the solid fuel runs out, we'll be able to see just their uh, flames here in a moment. Wait for it, wait for it. And maybe I should have put less solid fuel in here. Hmm, hmm. Well, it's almost burned out now and oh my God, we're already, we're already that high. These are seriously powerful rockets. I can see why all the mod images just have it as the one thing. And there we go, those flamed up, but we do still have the uh, little engines rolling there, the liquid fuel ones. It does actually look like the particles on one are 
further out than the other. Hmm, hadn't noticed that before. But yeah, they are. They also do have the gimbling on them, giving us a little bit of control, which is always good. Granted, for this rocket, oh boy, we may need a little bit more. But let's launch those things out and fire up our second stage, where I probably shouldn't have put this engine there, the Pike 2, because, well, haha, <laughs> it's getting heated up by the other rockets of the uh, S4 propulsion module. Again, this is really not where that propulsion module is meant to be, but eh, enjoy it, have fun. But uh, yeah, some nice particle effects there on that, sort of a wide spray really on that engine, but good small little uh, spray and particle effects on the propulsion module there. But let's throw up, wrong button, let's throttle that down, release that engine, and fire that solid fuel one. Beautiful. And then cut that one and throttle up the final stage, which I forgot to put another decoupler in there. And yeah, there goes all the fuel. <laughs> My very poorly designed rocket for this mod, but you know what? Some really great parts. I absolutely love these things, especially, I honestly, I think this little fuel tank with the solar panel may be my favorite, but also all the great detailed engines in this pack are just wonderful. So if you'd like a taste of the Indian space program in your game, I definitely recommend checking this mod out. It's a fun one, and from what the mod maker's saying, there's plans for a lot more parts in the future, which I can't wait to see. That's gonna be it for this episode, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed, and that you do come back for the next episode, when hopefully we'll be having a look at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, you have a good one.